<laughs> so, what does it mean to be smart? And how did somebody, uh, that's me, who, has, who is dyslexic and ADD with a little bit of H, and was told she wasn't going to pass high school, end up working for NASA. We will get to that. But first, a story. I might move a lot, camera people. <laughs> a very dear friend of mine strongly suggested that I go get tested for ADD. And I refused many, many times until a cat incident that I don't want to talk about. The cat is fine, but then I agreed. I want to show them that it wasn't I have ADD or ADHD, it's, it's just I need to buckle down. See, I know I have to buckle down. When I buckle down, I really get things done. And it's only a matter of a little bit of energy and strategy. So I decided to go to this appointment uh, three hours early, because that's how organized I am. And I sat in the doctor's office, which was very difficult for three hours, but I did it. And about 15 minutes before my appointment, my friend came into the room and he had this look on his face and sat down beside me and said, um, so I think we're in the wrong office. And I said, that's impossible. I've scoured the place. I've been here for three hours. This is where I'm supposed to be. But I'm also stubborn. So I went to the front desk and I said, excuse me, this is where we're getting tested for the ADHD. And the lady was like, no, oh no. Actually, it's four buildings down that way. Now, my friend is very impressive. Um, he found me. My cell phone was off because I was in a, in a hospital. And um, so I had a little breakdown at that point. Then we went to those four buildings over. We got to the place, and there's no chairs. It's just a big hallway. And I'm like, I love this. Look at this hallway. I'm just going to keep walking. And there's a guy at the end of the hallway, and he's saying, is there a Gabrielle? Follow the voice, Gabrielle. This way, this way. I was like, this is so fun. And I walk into the room. Now, this is not where they test you for ADD. They test you to see if you are, should be tested. So I sat down. There's a lot of talking. I don't know what was said. They left. They came back. And then they said, we figured out you do not need to be tested for ADHD. I was like, I knew it. Buckle down. More strategies. And they're like, no, 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 no. You are so ADD that you do not need to go and get tested to find out if you are ADD. One of the doctors said, we're surprised that you even made it in the building. And my friend was like, yeah, she didn't. She did not make it in the building. When I was doing this, prepping for this talk, I was so excited, I couldn't stop running around, and I realized I need to buckle down, and I need to stop, and I need to write stuff down, so I booked a hair appointment, um, so they would put me in the dome, and I could write my notes. There is no filter that makes you look good in this. Like, I tried all filters, nothing makes you look good in this, in those shots. I work at a summer camp, and at that summer camp, lovely, lovely, lovely place, there's a little girl, her name is Megan. And Megan is a little feisty nine-year-old. And she got there on the first day of camp, and there's a whole bunch of games that are happening. And one of the games is a scavenger hunt, and she wants to do the scavenger hunt. So she grabs the paper, and she looks at it. And she looks up, and she looks at it, and she says, goes to the counselor and says, excuse me, I don't learn this way? I was like, ooh. And the counselor, without missing a beat, assigned her to another counselor, and then there they were doing the scavenger hunt. And I had two feelings when I heard her say that. I wanted to high five Megan, I wanted to high five the counselor. And I was like, that's beautiful that she can recognize instead of holding onto that paper and maybe going to do another activity. And there's another part of me that was thinking about, but what about in the real world? In the real world, you can't say, excuse me, I don't do that. In the real world, it's a little bit more complicated. Approximately, these are some statistics that are out there, 4% of the population who are adults have ADHD. Interestingly enough, about 11% of children have ADHD, which is bizarre because you don't grow out of it. 
between 5 to 10% are dyslexic. I have both. I know you're jealous. <laughs> I want to explain to you a little bit what it's like for me to get information. What I see is a bunch of people with these really cool cards that are on a line and it's magnetic and they're like, wow, and there's these big glass doors and they just flash the card and let go and it goes right back to their hip and they walk through. I have this huge keychain of keys and I have this door and I have to try every single key until it gets in. By that time, people have gone in and out about 50 times before I was able to even get through. It's not only that the information is blocked for people that have learning differences, it's that you desperately, desperately want to get to your destination. You want to know what is going on behind that door. Your mind craves it. My brother and I had this great idea. We were about eight and nine years old. We wanted to do something nice for our parents. And uh, so we were like, we're going to make you dinner. And for those that are parents, they're like, oh, God, what's our backup plan? And we're like, we have an idea, and it's going to be genius. So they let us have the kitchen, and we wanted to make them scrambled eggs. And our genius plan was to mix the ketchup into the scrambled eggs and then cook it together. Team high five. My mother refused to try these eggs. Good intentions can sometimes become a double-edged sword. When I was in high school, I got six awards for effort. And I was told it is just as important as being on the honor list. I was very excited about this. I was like, oh, really? This is very exciting. And I got six of them every semester. However, at the end of the year, if you get one of those awards, you get to go to the theme park. If you got an effort award, you did not go to the theme park. This made a statement. Later on, I was asked to go to a college and to help the college with an award that they had. This award was for students that had dyslexia. And they could apply for this award and they would get funding to help them get tools and all this kind of stuff to help them with their learning. But they didn't have very many applicants. And so they said, would you come in and maybe you could tell us, like, guide us in the right way? And I said, oh, I'd love to. So I come in, there's a little bit of chit chat. I get a piece of paper. I look at the paper. I ignore the paper. Like, what are we talking about? And they said, this. And I look at it and I was like, this is full of words. Like, what is this? They say, it's the application. Oh. How, where do you put this? On the walls around the university. Hmm. What does it say? Oh, you need to write a 500-word essay to get the award. <laughs> I was like, I am in a joke right now. This is hilarious, guys. What's the real one? I know how to write a 500-word essay very, very easily. Pizza, friend, sit down beside please. That is how I get all of my paperwork done. Literally. I was told in high school that I wasn't going, I shouldn't, I wasn't going to graduate high school. I was told that I didn't have what it took. And I'm very stubborn. And so I went to college. I graduated, by the way. You may applause. Yes, it's a big deal. <laughs> When somebody tells you you can't, it's a nice little fuel to be like, I'll show you. So then I decided to go to college, which I was like on probation <laughs> so many times. I kept going in and be like, hey guys, I'm like, oh, come on in. Let's see where you're failing everything. <laughs> um, I worked hard. I, 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 I just got by. I had a lot of really smart friends I could sit down and listen to how they understood the information, then I could understand the information. I also did every once in a while the... So, you know that character in the book, like, in the middle, and then there was a thing that happened? Yeah, that thing. Crazy, right? And then that was the way that I would get some of the information. I have a whole bunch of little tricks like that um, that go on in my head. And I was able to make it to uh, Concordia University. And there was this teacher that everybody said, 
don't go. She's super, super tough. Um, you know, she, she'll fail you. At this point, I'm a solid C minus student, and it didn't matter if it was an easy teacher or a hard teacher, I was just C minus. Like, that's, that's where it was. So I was like, hard teacher? I love it, I wanna go. I like a challenge. So I met Ray, and when I got there, and I heard her speak for the first five minutes, I said, I need to know her information. I need to know what's going on in her brain. And she had said, there is a volunteer, three position volunteer, for the class, and it's small group leadership, so participation is important. So I was like, I am going to volunteer, and I have my hand so ready. And she says, first thing is to take class notes. Don't you even think about it. Second thing is to book, you know, group chats. I keep that hand down. Third thing is make tea. Well, I am going to make the best tea anybody's ever had in their whole entire life. I stuck up my hand, I was like, I will make the tea. Give me that opportunity, I will do this. And I had little cards that said like quotes of the day and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't also just sucking up. I had things like, does anybody know what Ray's talking about? Because I don't. And I had that kind of stuff and she liked that and she started calling me your highness and all these type of things um, <laughs> that I think are fantastic. And so when I finished my year, she asked me to go into her office. And she said she hadn't had an intern in a while, but she would like me to be her intern next year. And this was like doors flying open. And she said, but the only thing is, is that your grades aren't high enough. You, you need to have higher grades. And I had, this, I knew I was a C average student, I, no, no matter what I did. And what she said was, maybe if you put a little bit more effort into certain things. And I was like, I'll have you know, I won six effort awards. <laughs> and I gave her this book. I gave it to her, and um, she read it in one evening, because that's the type of person she is, and she called me, um, the next day, and she said, all right, let's do this. I want to work with you. And we did. And that led to a whole bunch of other cool stuff. NASA called her because they realized that their astronauts are super smart, but the team building aspect, they were struggling a little bit in. They wanted to create a test pilot project. And so they needed that, you know, a project to be developed. And she asked me to join her team. The team was a team of two, me and her. And instead of feeling uh, proud, and instead of feeling I've accomplished something, I felt ashamed, and I felt like I deceived everybody. I've been tricking my way into getting these opportunities. I didn't deserve this. And NASA, for somebody that was told you're not gonna pass high school. Working for NASA blew something in my mind that was like, maybe I'm smart. And that was upsetting. Because this whole time, I was telling people I was smart and defending myself, but deep down, I didn't believe it at all. I ended up TAing for her, and when I was TAing, I had a bunch of students, and eight students, and I told them, and my expectation part, listen, I'm not super attached to grades, so if, if you know, your grades are a little bit lower than normal, it's okay, we're gonna work on this together. I didn't realize the panic I was gonna cause in some of the students, and it, we're talking like flight or fight panic, like eyeballs going like, what? And uh, they came up to me and they said, well, what do you mean? Why, why, why would we have lower grades? I said, well, you know, it's a learning experience and can't all be A from the very beginning. Someone was like, I've always been an A. And I was like, oh. And I realized in that moment where I thought I was struggling so much in school, I didn't totally, totally didn't see this other aspect where my role at school was the experience. I'm never gonna be that student, but I just need to get that experience so I can learn. The A students, A plus students, their role 
was, I need to get the A. And we're in some way in this little pocket of vulnerability to not be exposed. I think everybody needs the opportunity to experience their own intelligence. But we need to kind of do that together. And one of the ways is having accessibility to information in different ways. Ironically, when I was trying to spell accessibility, the computer could not under, wouldn't give me a suggestion. That was a joke. All right, let's move on. <laughs> it's important that we're able to share. And when we're sharing, we're creating those connections of excitement. It's also saying, I'm proud to learn. And that's sometimes very hard to do. And last but not least, we want to have healthy risks and take those healthy risks. Because when you take a healthy risk, you're OK with making mistakes. And when you're making mistakes, you're trying. When you're trying, you're growing. And at the end of the day, wouldn't it be so cool if we could all say, excuse me, I don't learn that way. Thank you very much. Keep on learning. Thank you.